box and design a tag. <laughs> Hello. Hello, 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 hello. I am, you know, have come from brunch today and somebody's come from the beach. <laughs> These are our outfits for the show I figured, today. I figured we're watching, RuPaul, uh, we're reviewing Vegas Review and it's about gays and gays live for a good tank top, so she's wearing a tank top. Mm -hmm. I thought she was at Derek Barry's house for a party, for the pool party. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you can say about Miss Derek Barry, though, the bitch ain't racist. Oh, no, 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 definitely not, definitely not. So <laughs> she is, um, man, she is that mean girl from high school. She really is. It just comes through every episode. She is a mean girl. I bet she was real mean in high school. I so, think because she, she I don't loves know if it's mean per se. I just say it's messy because she does care at the same time. It's fake. That's what I'm saying. Because I don't like girls or gays who are like, let me stir, let me stir this pot and then be like, oh, why are you mad at her? Or like, I just want everybody to get along. No, you don't, bitch. You want to derive any attention to get it back on yourself and make you True. the center of the narrative. So that's why I don't like Derek Barry messy. Oh, I hope I never run into her, Modesto. I really don't. <laughs> What you gonna do? You know, you ain't gonna speak on it. You ain't gonna run up on her and say nothing because she'll get you right together, honey, with a quickness. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> not with that pasty skin. I don't understand how she has not had any sort of tan living in Vegas all those years. Well, because she living at the club every night, honey, at the bar, never goes outside, never does any type of workout, only drinking, perusing, trying to get more men in her harem. <laughs> Let's tell the truth. <laughs> All right. So we got way off topic right at the beginning. <laughs> right. I mean, it's relevant still. But it is relevant. So, but this... It is relevant. But this this episode was really a gag. I've kind of been like, eh, it's been bozing along. I haven't really been to whatever. I was really gagged last episode week. Five. We had to bring Randy. So if you don't know, Randy is one of the executive producers of Drag Race proper and all of its international licenses. And I guess he's involved in the Las, the Las Vegas Review too. So they had to have that meeting. And it's never a fun meeting when the executive producer got to come and be like, y'all need to get it together. Yeah, that was in episode four. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that was like, and so that kind of blended into the beginning yeah. of episode five. So they started with that, and then, you know, that's just not good. You know, it's never good when the director or your boss has to come in and be like, y'all bitches need to start getting along. But she didn't technically say that, though. She just, Yeah, but it was implied. It, it was, was implied, implied, though, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. But they didn't it, listen to her. Yeah, mm -mm. so these girls uh, live, bigger, lived bigger. So, well, the guy. But I mean, uh, but she, and what their solution was was to give her her own dressing room, mm -hmm. which, quite frankly, in, it almost makes more sense, to be honest with you. She does host the whole show. But I think, quote me if I'm wrong, because I, I just did, but I think the dressing room's on the third floor. So if you're in that many scenes, like you need a dressing room on the first floor. Like you need something really adjacent to the stage. So that's a lot of... I think her, I don't, well, I don't think her quick changes, I think her quick changes are done on stage anyway. Right, but that's still, like, it's like when you're like a principal dancer in a ballet company, you're like dressing room is like right to the side of the stage yeah no it should yeah. be but i mean like at the same time i don't think it's that big of a deal mm -hmm. that she has her own dressing room because like i said like she and is also, the host and also to bring it back to that showgirls analogy going up all those stairs and the hills you know so True. changes with the marble side note at any minute side note i thought of a really brilliant idea just because i've watched i watched um some footage of the 2010 production on broadway of la Caja Four. And um, I thought it would be brilliant to do, huh? Circling around. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's drag. It's about <laughs> drag. I thought it would be a brilliant to do a revival with an all drag race cast. Now, that, oh, would, be genius. that would be really good. Yeah, now that you mm -hmm. said it, that really would be a, a stunner. Maybe when Broadway opens up. Who yeah. was the lead in La Caja Fall when you saw it? Um, 
the one who played like the owner of the club is what's that in, um British queen? Oh, she has that talk show. Oh, um, and she used to be a guest sometimes on Drag Race. Graham Norton. Yeah, Graham Norton. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So he played the guy version, and then I can't remember who played the drag um main character, but I don't know that. I, I'm not familiar with her, but. I, I just, just remember saw, Graham. Like, a regional production of it at like the Sunnyvale like community players like two years ago. And it, I forgot how much I like loved that musical. So it's a brilliant musical. That's what I'm saying. Fun. Like I would cast who can we cast? I mean, not to go too off subject, but who can we cast to be the lead? Oh. You know who would be really good, who could really That's hold the same, mind you, huh? And she's not your, a, not, not necessarily everybody's first pick. I think Jujubee could be really great because Jujubee could really sing. You know what? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Courtney, I was thinking, um, I Courtney was thinking Courtney really Ack, good. Yeah, Courtney Ack would be really good too. Because she can so. sing, sing. And if Adora Lilano could get her crazy together, she could probably be good as well. <laughs> no, I don't know if she can, she can't, I don't know if she can channel that. To, to rock, to rock. Yeah. And yeah. then so, and then we need to put somebody to play like the male, which would be the Gordon Cam. Well, they're all male, but you know, to play the owner rather. Mm-hmm. And then that character could be done. It's still, I think it should be an all drag race cast for the most part. So I think th- that character should be played, and then they just do a boy. Um, maybe. Um, actually, no. The dad, the 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 conservative parents mm-hmm. could be. Um, what's um what's her name? Oh my gosh, that big queen. You're always reading her to filth. She's like Stumpy. Davis? <laughs> no, she's oh, funny, Ginger Minge. Stumpy. Ginger Minge. I think she could play the, the, the conservative dad really well. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. But to play Grant, the owner of the club, who could that be? Cameron Michaels? No. I don't think she has acting chops like that. Mm, I guess that's true. Um... <laughs> oh, that's a toughie. Right, because right. we're asking them to now be Du Boy. Right, exactly. So at that, that, that point, you're just regular yeah, acting. We know it's but, not going to be Carson or Ross. <laughs> I know. Well, the thing is, though, that character is still, they, they still are pretty femme, like the femme-ish. Yeah, that's true. Kind of. All right, well, let's, but let's, anyway, let's, back, let's to back to the so, episode. Let's circle back to Vegas. So it really starts off with a bang. We have the ultimate guest star of the uh, RuPaul Drag Race franchise, Vanjie Mateo's mother. <laughs> That you Vanjie's see mom. exactly how Vanessa Vanjie Mateo became who she is because her and her mother, the umbilical cord was never a cut between them. And she, she was such a fag hag. I loved it. She was such a hag. So I love that she is like, she was probably hooting and hollering at Vanjie's first show. With yeah, her. for sure. So there definitely was no um, distance between her and uh, uh, Vanjie's drag career. She uh, she accepted her with open arms. So, for sure. For sure. So that was funny. So she was a gag. Yeah, she was a gag. She wanted to drink. She wanted to gamble. She was she was ready to go. Right. She's, so, she's literally the female version of Vanjie. Yeah. I live for Evie Oddly and Vanjie's mom together because it was just so loud that Vanjie was actually quiet. Like Evie doing that crazy Evie laugh like, ah! <laughs> Everything that Banshee's mom said, I was just gagged by that scene. Just that's true. That was that's true. That was a gag scene. Um, and then Banshee's mom is trying to set up Cameron because, mm-hmm. well, because well, Banshee like broke down a little bit about wanting to find someone or whatever, mm-hmm. and then she's just like, "It'll happen, whatever." And then later they come. All of the girls come except Cam- I am Asia, of course, and she's all like, "You, what about you? Who are you dating?" Right. She just got right to it. But that, you know, that's the Puerto Rican mother way. Exactly. Like she said, it's like, right. This point and, it just, right. and it just so happens that that Cameron had just got chopped at the top of the Eiffel Tower, honey. So, right. So, so she oh, then it, it made it, lit, but it did spark something in Cameron's head because now she's just like, well, actually, I'm, I'm not, I never thought about it, but I'm not mad at it. Uh-huh. Which I thought is interesting, though. What right. do you think about that? I just am always really surprised when there's a Kai Kai moment between like <laughs> any of the queens. Like even going but back that's to a, like, like that's even, the Kai Kai that you could kind of see coming because right. Cameron's cute. Yeah, even like between like Sharon and Alaska, which makes total sense, you know, because they're that so, so, so gothy queens. I'm always mm-hmm. like, <laughs> and I, I think you, I think you would be. I think it's crazy to assume that like with a Cameron Michaels around, 
and girls are thirsty like no one's gonna develop like you would do t- you would too you would st- i feel like you would start being like yeah, it's okay, cute. Like, I, i'm gonna say this and i don't want the internet mob to come for me and I'm, <laughs> I'm saying this with like seriousness i'm just not that into cameron michaels like i don't know what it is i just not that into him i'm not i i i didn't really get the appeal so you would push her off of you well, you know, maybe not after four drinks, but... <laughs> Girl, please. You wouldn't need... I don't even think you would need one drink. <laughs> I don't know. I just I just never really been into it. So I, I mean, you, you know better than anything else, like, the type of guys that I did. I mean, they practically look like Trump supporters, you know, so it's just not... But it's... My... But I know, but it's just, like, Cameron's, like attractive like it's just like I, I'm not saying I'm not disagreeing with that at all Cameron is very very attractive I he's a very very attractive man it's just he's just even if he I didn't know he was drag queen it's, he's just not really my cup of tea I'm not really into that like no bitch you're, 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 you're giving me very no bitch don't try to blame I even mean, if I didn't know as a drag queen no it's because you think he's a woman yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's you know and it all really comes down to personal taste and this is just really not my thing if that is your thing go live your life go live no your i know i'm no no i'm not i'm no, not i'm not, not, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not like, like that so no i know it is your personal taste, but i'm just saying like i still just don't believe you i still think if he was just like come on let's go like i think you would go with him but right. you say I mean, so it'd be fun for like a night like you know sure that's what i'm saying but you almost made it sound like you don't want him to touch you <laughs> no not that bad but oh. not my not my cup of tea like i would rather be with the man that she broke up with like that's more my <laughs> well, <laughs> but I'm, quite frankly their personalities they're like they're not too much different oh i mean they're what personalities <laughs> there are <laughs> yes. no personalities they so, almost were the same yeah i need to be really like intoxicated by a personality and I just was not getting that from either of them so but that's me enough about me okay so <laughs> his mom comes so that's not the only visitor Asia's fiance comes from Denver is that right no Texas Texas is that where they was okay so Texas mm-hmm. so when they go on like a whirlwind all through Las Vegas they go rain shopping at David Uriman they get a suite at Caesar's Palace oh honey though when they went ring shopping in the mall and I was just like the rings they were trying I was just like these those are atrocious I mean I'm sure that this was some advertising set up from David Uriman but I'm like if you don't take me for Cartier for my wedding ring I don't want nothing you know <laughs> so I would mm-mm. Actually, the ring that I want is by a company called Whores and Booze. So it like, it clicks into one another. So it'd be like an engagement ring and a wedding ring together. So that's what I really would like. So, and that, that is not in Las Vegas. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you can get anything in Las Vegas, but I just think the ones they, because I just saw like, it just looked gaudy and tacky. A lot of a lot of men's um, uh, wedding rings come from David Yerman. A lot, so like I know a lot. I could see that of that that type of ring. But um, very few, um, you know, men. But then yeah. So how about her asking the the person helping her how long she's been married? I was just like, this is so now. This is so just staged. Yeah, that was giving me script. Like I'm not like a person. Like I am polite to everybody I interact with, but I am not a person who like I don't need to get to know the salespeople or my waitress or the person at Starbucks. It's the help. I'm polite and never rude, but I am like these people are working. Like get down to business and move on. You know, like they don't want to hear your life story. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I am just very from that school. So I'm just because like I've worked in that world and I like I'm like. People are telling me their life story. For sure. <laughs> so not me. So then they get the suite at Caesar Palace. It's really amazing. Um, the man goes to the show, and then they wake up the next morning in Caesar's Palace, and then the man wants to talk about the wedding. So they definitely, like, the producers definitely push this wedding narrative, like, you know, to be in front of the camera. But that ultimately led to the sort of shaky holes in Asia's family story because she has not really fully told the full story on camera to the audience, nor has she really told it to this man. So She still hasn't told the man. Yeah, and I... I thought and, she was going to tell him right there. I understand maybe not wanting to give everything away to the world on camera about your family history, but I definitely think you owe that to the partner 
that you are getting married to. Because if you're not starting with like that honesty right away, that's like a recipe for disaster in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I feel, I, I really, really feel for Asia. I really, really do because she just, she's a very emotional person. That was very obvious back to her season, you know, when she started crying about the vixen, you know, and that confrontation during, you know, yeah. the regroup. And now, you know, we see how emotional she is and people just handle things different. You know, like she said, not everybody's a Naomi where it can just be like, whatever, you know, water off the duck's back. So I True. really feel for Asia because she really feels for everything so deeply. And I think if she did let the story out on camera, she'd really have like a nervous breakdown out on camera. And I think that's what she's trying to like really hold back is not really going off the handle. Like she's crying, but I think she would full on be shaking you know, need like a sedative to calm down if she really went through the family history on camera. So I don't, it, it's making me almost uncomfortable that they keep pushing this narrative because you could see how deep rooted it is for her. And, you know, it, it just may not be something appropriate to discuss, you know, in a public forum like television. True. What do you think about that? Because they're, you know, they keep going on and on and on. They being the other queens about Asia's being so immature. This has been so, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, blown out of proportion. And I'm like, you guys are the ones stirring this pot, especially Derek. You know, I think if anyone is to blame for what has the drama on the show, it's Derek. It's definitely not Asia. Asia is just simply being like, I am uncomfortable with this space with you. I am moving. You know, I do not want to kiki with you because I don't want to keep having these moments of drama on camera. Yeah. Well, it's really just because Asia's feelings got hurt and she didn't feel comfortable in the room anymore. So she left, which I think is fine. And to be quite honest, she deserves her own dressing room to begin with because she's the host. Oftentimes the host will have their own dressing room anyway. So I don't even think it's that big of a deal. And it's kind of like, we've always talked about this like show. It's like, you know, not everything has to be like a kumbaya with everybody you work with. Like at the end of the day, I get it's drag. I get it's not corporate America, but you're not going to get along with everybody you, you know, work with. And, you know, she's not getting along with the people she works with and she doesn't have to be best friends with them off stage. And it was annoying how Derek was like, oh, I miss those little moments where like, you know, Asia would wink at me and, you know, we'd be so oh. on stage. And I'm like, bitch, you have yourself to blame for that. Right. So I hate how she's always trying to make herself the victim when she is the Wicked Witch of the West of this situation. True, very, very true. Yeah. Very, very true. I so don't like she, Derek Barry, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the basically, um, Asia's man basically told her, though, like, you, I want you to be able to come to me because I'm supposed to help you with this stuff. So she's probably opening up to it, but she still hasn't told him anything really yet. She hasn't told anybody anything. Because like I said, I really honestly think she would have a like, very physical breakdown on camera. Well, know? I mean, she told the story, though, about... Yeah. The, she, she, she did said- tell the story. She said what she she's told about, about the the yeah. like the parents passing and stuff like that, and she also told, she did tell the man about like how he kind of blamed her, mm-hmm. how the dad blamed her. Right. Yeah. Well, her, yeah, that, the dad blamed her for like the mom moving out or whatever, but mm-hmm. and they well, haven't talked since. But a funner moment was the world went wig shopping to that cheap strip uh, wig strip mall. So like they don't have these lace front wigs like shop by like wigs by vanity from Australia. Like they ever right. wear a shake and go wig like that. But what was a gag though was, and this is the only, you can only get this with the shake and go wig is when Derek started impert doing all the white stereotypes with the wig on and he did all the different Karens, which was right. hilarious because Derek has proved herself the worst actress of drag race history <laughs> and all the challenges. And I was like, where was this? Like, where was this great comedian you right. know, on Drag Race? Because acting, definitely not her thing. I'm still at a loss today, even seeing the Las Vegas show in the clips, what Derek Barry's talent is. <laughs> still today. She can serve Britney. Well, that's a she talent. used to be able to. And she's, Br- now Britney she's can't serving. Even Britney anymore. <laughs> well, she's serving what Britney serves now. She's keeping up at least. <laughs> right, exactly. So, but, um, how about um, how about Naomi asking questions again? She has no business asking because it got her in trouble last time, and you might not like the answer. But at least it led to somewhere good this time because I love yeah. when Cameron confessed that he was interested in Banshee, and Naomi was like, "Right, 
the nail with the fake nails. I was gagged. If I could freeze frame that and put it on a t-shirt, I would, because it was just such a good face where she was like. True. But yeah, gagged, well, she, well they, they got to that because she said, well, I'll go. I think I don't like Banji's wig. I was just like, ooh. Oh, the and the show wig. yeah the tinsel wig i mean yeah. they were gagged and gooped by that confession i mean they didn't know what to do with their lives they were like how am i going to continue on with the rest of my afternoon knowing this information now oh about her about yeah with cameron liking vanji yeah, yeah exactly they were gagged and gooped they were so gagged and gooped so then um they have a little mini night out with the burlesque dancers um in their casino that they work at before the show and so and then um out of nowhere <laughs> no one expected this coco montrese just pops up out of nowhere <laughs> we find out she's the understudy for the show right. both ronald and i were like <laughs> right like our head exploded because who knew and then i wouldn't you know say coco montrese is like my favorite drag queen or the most famous drag queen or you know however you want to put it but i just thought it was a little like poor coco having to be the understudy i just thought it was really sad and, she, and then and derek in the confessionals just like she's actually my understudy and I'm not, I'm going to be at work. I was just like, oh, that's the shade. But and she's you know, actually close her, friends with Coco. You she's know, actually close not, friends with Coco. And I think she even got Coco to be the understudy. Like she asked if Coco could be understudy because she wanted her to have something. Yeah, because Derek is not missing no shows. She got but that. Yeah, she's not missing anything. And those two dead weight men. <laughs> right, but you, right. But you do need, to, every show does need to have an understudy. So I guess she was just like, well, I might as well have my friend be it. I yeah, guess that's why. This makes me curious. Who are the four other understudies for the other ones? Right, is I know. Is somebody well known or is it like someone local? Like, I need to know. I like, don't think it would be right to have someone local, though, because we're going to see Drag Race Girls. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like a lesser note. Like, is jo like Jocelyn Fox back there? Like, we yeah, Jocelyn like, Fox. Would be yeah, like who, who is the lesser knowns that are back there? Like, I need to know immediately. Like For sure who it is for sure i'm trying to think like who would really be a gag if they came out and like <laughs> as an understudy as an understudy you could make um what's the the one's name who said <laughs> opulence <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> she honestly really... she could be an understudy yeah no so true like a cloak at this like point calorie kardashian so oh yeah and her too <laughs> oh the poor forgotten the poor forgotten girls. Don't no shade, honey mahogany better get up in that gig. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, because she 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 she's like she does well with everything else. No, that's true. Like that's she's successful in everything else. It doesn't need to be dragged. Good coins. So she can probably uh -huh. fly in and out from there to San Francisco. <laughs> well, that's true too. But I mean like I think she's um she's like like she's she's bigger than an understudy though. Right, exactly. Jan Sport better get on that right away. That's definitely one that needs to get up in that understudy gig. Jan Sport? Yeah, yeah Jan Sport. No, Jan Sport wouldn't be an understudy. She's too big. You just don't like her. She could actually like have if she wanted to. Huh? The, the dresses she's wearing? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least she could sing live. She <laughs> could actually play in the revival of the La Cage Oh, well, that's definitely not a show I'll be going to see. <laughs> You're on your own for that one. Tell me how it is. You could do a little show by yourself. I'll send you the Zoom link. <laughs> Thank you. She can sing, Shane, and she can act. And, and she kind of fits the, the past girls who've played the role. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be hating on her because she can sing, bitch. Sure. <laughs> So anyhow, off topic once again. So Coco wants to be it. So then, of course, Derek has to stir, stir the pot. They got to play spin the bottle again, like it's, they're 13 years old, because that's Derek Barry's mindset, junior high school, buyer high school. Well, because his, his mind, he was thinking that, well, Cameron doesn't know what to do. At one point, Karen does actually mount to him, like, what do I do? So I guess he figured he could save the day by doing spin the bottle and work the first time with Naomi. So I guess that's what he thought. I guess so. Yeah, when Naomi had that long kiss, I'm still not over that with that cute dancer with the Caesar haircut. So, Well, why do you like him, but you don't like Cameron? Because he has a masculine energy. See, he's problematic, people, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it's because Cameron does drags. There, there it is, people, because they literally are the exact same body type and everything. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like what I like. So, <laughs> so I then, mean, you are a woman, I told you so. So then Cameron and Banji do um, the spin the bottle does land on, who does it land on? It lands on Cameron, right? Yeah. Well, and, he does, he, well, yeah, it, no, it lands on, um, well, yeah, it lands on Cameron. Then he does any, mini miny, mo to get it to Banji. Banji, which is so staged, but whatever, we loved it. Right. And so, and then they kiss and then it's kind of lackluster. It's not so... Great. So then Cameron asks Banji to get a drink by the bar and then asks for the do-over and confesses the love for Banji. And so, and I thought it was kind of sweet. Like it was very, like Banji was very flattered, like authentically flattered and surprised. Yeah. And I thought it was very nice, you know, so because after cute. that Brooklyn Lynn Heights debacle, Banji needs a little love. Banji needs a little love. And I, I, you know, it was very honest. I thought it was very vulnerable what she said, you know, about the audience and she loves the, you know, love from the audience, but, you know, she wants love, you know, when the curtain goes down and behind her closed doors and when she's not Banji, you know, and, and like, as they've alluded to, it's such a large personality like Banji. It's not like finding love for Cameron Michaels, you know, who's more of a quieter quieter drag queen, quieter person outside of drag. Like, Vanjie's on 11 all the time, you know? Right. So, um, so that's, um, you know, I'm happy for her, good for her. Love is where you find it, like Whitney Houston said. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. She had to say that yeah, about no. that I didn't agree with, but I will agree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's true. No, they're cute together, they're cute together. Right. So next week is the final episode where they are going to go over COVID and kind of the complications of COVID because they shut down Broadway and then they kind of ask themselves what's going to be next for Vegas, which I've been very confused. That's about why it's the season finale. Like, when, how long ago was this filmed? You know, like was it six months ago a year? You know, it was very. I guess it wasn't that long ago then. Yeah, it was very. It was, well, the show's been very COVID free until this point. So I was always very like, well, how long ago was this? You know, so I'm kind of, it's kind of going to be interesting how this plays into you know everything going on because Las Vegas is a city that's like you know I live in Silicon Valley you know everybody's working from home this is not a big deal everybody works in front of a computer every day casinos hotel check-ins live performers retail Las Vegas is a town based on entertainment and based on experiences and there's no way to deliver those experiences if you're not interacting with people so um it's going to be interesting just their whole take on all of this true yeah that'll be interesting to see um i didn't know that's what the next episode was going to be about because i don't normally watch the for the next episode whatever but um i didn't know it was going to be that but i mean it makes sense because the show it hasn't been on for that long the oh, production, I yeah. Think it was on. So I'm not surprised that they were filming I mean, up until COVID. More than three months, I'd be shocked. I mean, it, I I would say maybe as little as a month. You know. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that they ran into COVID. Yeah. So but, and um, you know, and I feel bad for these girls in a way because you know this really is their livelihood, and you know, I, I, you know, we are the biggest fans of drag, but I myself, I mean, I cannot keep up with all these online drag shows you know what time they are what day they it's are it's not the same it's in person is what serves yeah. <laughs> speaking of a little fun side note though um we um, actually when we uh we're gonna have to put in the picture of this we i was living this week for a uh, stacy lane matthews in the full like face mask with the fishing net when she was performing oh she was fishing she was literally fishing for tips with the yeah well yeah because that's true um some some spread, like bars are doing like outdoor stuff right. and the girls are performing again so like they, they are stuff is like it's like yeah. performing is becoming a thing again for the drag queens like they're able to perform again it's just it needs to be outside yeah and i love that we stand a responsible queen so <laughs> yes they'll they they well i've only ever where is that i think it's in um oh there's there it's all over the instagram but the ones that um because it's actually like a small it's not like a small town but it's not like that's i don't think that was in la or anything oh no 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 no. that was probably definitely in north carolina where um yeah but it's cute because they have these little like clear masks so you can see their mouth right exactly so yeah. i have to find so a picture so that was or something cute. that was cute yeah you're gonna have to find a picture of that so we could show the people so so little by little little by little you know the gay bars are opening up serving the food people want food and drag so right for sure. So, all right. So we got Drag Race Holland coming up. We got the Emmys coming up. So, yeah. and then we are open to ideas. Um, yes. so Stay tuned. And in the meantime, subscribe down below.
Bye, right. you guys. I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.